Hello everybody, uh, Brando here again, um, and uh, let's uh, talk about um, trimming cases, and specifically let's uh, trim cases uh, with the Hornady case trimmer, and I'll kind of give you some things about what I like and what I don't like about this particular case trimmer, because uh, there's one thing I don't like about it that I wish that would be changed, but uh, I figure um, we would discuss um, really the basics of how to do a case trimming and really what we're trying to do. Um, in addition to actually kind of reviewing the Hornady case trimmer as well. So, so let's start with that. <clears throat> um, today I'm actually going to work with a 30-06 round. Um, this is um, a round that I use for hunting. I have a 30-06 um, that I've hunted with over the past three years. And um, I've been reloading for it. And I kind of wanted to um, use that as an example because I, I don't have a setup for it. They haven't uh, reloaded for a while for this particular round. So I figured I would kind of show you how I would set the, the case trimmer up and, and so forth as well at the same time. Now, one of the first things that, um, that we do when we're going to start reloading and setting up cases is um, we need to take a look at the overall dimensions of the case and basically what we're looking for when we want to um, reload a case. Now what I have here is a Hornady manual and uh, basically I've turned it to the 30-06 Springfield um, uh, page. And this particular page gives me some valuable, inf valuable information, uh, such as the maximum case overall length, and also the maximum case length and the case trim length. Okay, um, the the two that I'm really going to be concerned with here is the maximum case length and, of course, the maximum or excuse me, the case trim length. Okay, so for 30 out six, it says that the maximum case length is 2.494 and that the case trim length is 2.484. So basically one tenth, or excuse me, one one hundredth a difference between the maximum and what they want you to trim the case down to. So you don't have a whole lot of rooms to be to play with there, just a thousandth of an inch. Um, so I have some 30 out six cases here and basically what we can do is we can measure these to see where they are and if they even need trimming. Okay, now we're going to trim them because we're just going to do that. Now here, these are fired cases. This is actually a twice fired case, and this one just happens to be measuring 1.4. I mean, excuse me, 2.483. All right, so this is actually underneath what the case trim length should be. So of course, I would not need to even trim this case because this one's a little bit smaller. And I'm sure that some of the factory ammunition that we take a look at. Um, will be will be different in size, but this is just what this manual says. Now, if I look at the Lyman manual, it may show be a little bit different as well. Uh, this one actually says uh, 4.85. Okay, so I necessarily wouldn't need to trim this one either. I mean, it's probably okay. Um, this case here, the one that I'm going to use for this example, is actually measured out to be um, 2.495. Uh, and it says that the maximum case length. Excuse me, if I readjust that right, 2.942, 492. So 492, I'm actually within specifications that I need to be, but I can trim it down to 2.484, and we'll just do that for this particular demonstration. Now, then that kind of takes us over to the actual Hornady case trimmer and how we use that case trimmer. Uh, a couple of different things that you have to know or have to do in order to use this case trimmer is number one you have to use a Hornady branded shell plate okay so if I pick this up this is a shell plate right here okay the same one that I use in my press and I've taken it off and I've put it you know into the case trimmer you have to use the Hornady one because if I loosen this up and take it out and I'll show you the hole there's a hole here Yep, not quite yet. Here we go. This hole right here, or this piece right here, has to fit the hole of the case. It, the RCBS one, for an example, is a little bit smaller, and it just will not fit. Okay. So I've learned to only use Hornady um, uh, shell holders, which is not a huge thing. But sometimes, like I go to the Bass Pro Shop to buy a lot of this stuff sometimes, and sometimes at the Bass Pro Shop, they may not have the Hornady one that I need to fit, so I have to order it or something like that. And I've actually bought the RCBS one in the in the past, and uh, I can't use it. And I can use it in the press, but I can't use it here. But not a huge deal. So another thing that I've put in here 
is this little, I don't even know what you call it, part of the lathe part here where the cutter is. And this part right here actually is the same diameter as the actual casing. So what happens is when I'm actually lathing this around and spinning it, okay, I'm not wobbling all over the place, okay. This is actually guided. I guess it's called a guide rod or something like that. I don't know the correct term for it, but that's basically what it's used for, okay. Um, so what I have to do is basically insert the shell or the case into the case trimmer and then I can lock it down by turning this knob. Let me actually get it to where I can do that. It has to be pretty close set up. There we go. So now if I put this in here, turn this a little bit, what happens is, is that um, um, rod that I showed you earlier will actually go inside where the primer is. Okay, which means that I, I couldn't size this case here. I need to deprime it first, and that little rod goes inside where that primer would go. All right, so then I basically what I want to do is I want to extend this as far as it will go, okay, because it moves back and forth. All right, and then I want to move this rod or this ram or whatever you want to call it basically up until it hits the cutting tool, and then I'll tighten it down. Okay. Now what I do from here is basically start turning and I should not be taking anything off of the case. Okay. That means that I'm flush. That's, that just tells me that this is going to, if I run other cases through here that were longer, I, this would be my master basically and it would move everything to a, I think we measured it to be 2.492. Okay. I don't want it to be 2.492, I want it to be 2.8. 2.485 so what I need to do is I need to loosen it up and I need to move this forward just a tad okay now and then I can move the blade back onto the casing and then start spinning it and you may not be able to see that but there is actually um, brass coming off there. Okay, and you can probably see it on the blade there. It's kind of blurry. I'm using a crappy, not a crappy camera. I actually like it, but all right. Now I take this off after I spun a little bit. Let me loosen up the case. I can take it out and then do another measurement. And now I'm at 2.8 Okay, I needed to be at 2.485, I'm at 2.486, close enough for me, and then I have the case trimmed and it case where I need it to be. Okay, now from here, what I usually do, let me look at my tools section here, is I have a deburring tool, okay, and I basically will make a couple spins here to get some of the burrs out and make a couple of spins on the outside so you basically have an inner diameter and outer di diameter that you that you correct and then I have a brush which is basically um, a cleaning rod brush that I'll stick in here and pull out to get any debris out from the um, the thing. I'm, I realize I just had that off camera, I'm sorry, but basically uh, use the brush um, to clean the inside of the case as well. So, and that's how I do it. Um, let me talk about um, some things that I really like about this particular trimmer. Once you have it set up and you are dialed in, you're golden. You can just plug cases in all day long. You just put the case in, tighten it down, run the run the uh, blade in, and spin. Okay. What I don't like about it, there's no micro adjustment, and I would like there to be a micro adjustment here where I could like move this and this would like come in a little bit. Be some, I guess we'd call it metered or mitered or something like that, to where it would actually come in and come out as I turn this. It doesn't do that; it just locks down. Okay. Um, another thing that I think is kind of a disadvantage about the Hornady is you have to use the Hornady uh, shell plates or shell holders, and you have to have the case deprimed. Okay, so you got to go through a priming step or depriming step in order to use it. And I think the Lyman one you do not have to do that, and the Lyman one has its own little proprietary shell holder that you don't even need a shell holder for. So if I was going to go back and do this again, would I purchase the Hornady versus the Lyman or another one? 
I don't know. I may go with the Lyman. Um, but I've been pretty happy with the Hornady. It does, it serves my purposes. And again, I enjoy Hornady products. And if I go in and take a look at what Hornady's been doing, which is the Get Loaded. Now, this is the Get Loaded 2010. 2011 will actually let you purchase this right here. I wish I bought it in 2011, but I didn't. Um, and you could get 100 free bullets if you purchase this. So is it worth it? Maybe. Get 100 free bullets, I'll take 100 free bullets. So, um, you know, that's always something to take a look at, too. Hornady's been offering that promotion for a while now, and it's been doing pretty good. So, anyway, that is my review and kind of showing some basic operation of how to use a Hornady case trimmer. Um, I like it. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the next things I'd like to get is a case station, as far as a case prep station, that not necessarily does the trimming. I can use the trimmer for that but one that will automatically do the deburring and the um, chamfering here because over time a little arthritis sets in on my hand or something like that and that just gets to be a pain and I can really only stand sometimes to reload maybe 20 to 40 rounds and then I'm pretty much done okay and sometimes I break it out into different uh, steps maybe one day I'll do a bunch of case trimming and throw those in a in a bin you know something like this and I have a bunch of them stacked up um, and then maybe I'll um, do a bunch of uh, priming and depriming on one particular day. You know, I just break it up. And that necessarily go with, with rifle rounds. That also goes with, um, with uh, doing handgun ammunition as well. So um, if you guys have any questions about this particular setup with a Hornady case trimmer, please feel free to comment. Um, also, um, um, one thing about this, you can bolt this thing down. Uh, I just have not chosen to do so. Uh, I have a limited space on my bench, and I usually, when I'm done with it, I just kind of move it out of the way. Okay, I, I like having this area specifically for my loading block because my um, if I move my camera back here, my press is just right there. Okay, so I like that space, and I usually when I store this, I just kind of store it back you know, in this particular corner, something like that. Oh. One more thing I forgot. Um, what gun am I carrying today? Well, today it is the Colt 1911, and it is cocked and ready. Okay, I will not touch the trigger. It is loaded and ready to go. The safety is on. So, there you go. I uh, hope you guys enjoy my videos. Um, I'm up to 19 subscribers as of today. I'd like to get 20 uh, by the end of the week. How about that? And then um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm really trying to push for 100. So if you would like to see my stuff and you, and you like what I have, please subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, also, uh, maybe there is a contest in the future to hit up to like 500 subscribers or maybe 200 subscribers. I don't think I'll do it for 100. If I get desperate, I will. But let's get there first. So talk to you guys later.